between uh, members of the foreign press and the local press. We would encourage everyone to ask the questions directly to Senator Gordon. You are allowed to have a follow-up question. We'll try to keep that brief if possible so we can um, encourage others and give enough time for others to ask questions. So I see Robert asking, Robert Harlan has a question, um, but let me first fire the first question. Uh, Senator, you talked about suggesting uh, to the DOH easing protocols um, when it comes to pre-screening for COVID okay. vaccinations. Would you like to um, talk briefly about what sort okay. of protocols you'd like to have removed? And well, how do you think that I can impact? Think, um, how do you think that can impact? Is the name of the game. Yeah. Uh, you have to uh, drain the swamp, not only by way of testing, but drain the swamp by way of making sure that COVID goes away by vaccination. They've done that in the US, they've done that in China, they've done that in many countries right now, and we still have to do it. Now, look at it this way. If you have a, a target of 70 million tests and uh, you need to uh, you need to test uh, to be able to get it, uh, you need to test about 250,000, uh, 240,000 per day. And right now we're only doing currently 60,000 per day. Uh, if we vaccinate 240,000 vaccinations per day, this rate to vaccinate 70 million will take one and a half years. So you can see right now you're doing 60,000. You really have to uh, uh, practically do four times of that. And the only way to do that is speed up the line, uh, make sure that you have a quick response mechanism in case people suffer some, uh, uh, you know, disagreeable results uh, and ready to put them into hospitals. And I know that most of the vaccinations, at least in the Red Cross, we have right away anti-allergic medicine and we have doctors and, uh, you know, first aiders right away to come to the rescue. But we have to make sure that if they don't have that, uh, there must be ambulances or doctors ready to come in right away. Also, uh, like I said, we want to do doctors, uh, uh, more vaccination. Uh, we, we lead doctors and nurses, the frontliners, dentists, you know, vet meds and everybody. So we want to make sure that they are vaccinated first. Uh, alongside, you're not going to do it overnight, but uh, at least they have the confidence that not only are they safe, they're secure, that their families are safe as well. And so that other doctors will now uh, get vaccinated and be able to help uh, in terms of more vaccinations for our people. Also, uh, we need to make sure uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, I have a, some notes here. Let me just reflect on my notes here for a while. Uh, we provide incentives uh, to get vaccinated. Uh, you know, I've talked to Dunkin' Donuts. We're aping what uh, uh, Krispy Kreme is doing in America. One donut if you get the vaccination. And uh, we also talked to uh, uh, our friends in the... Uh, uh, Starbucks, you know, so that uh, uh, they can get the taste of Starbucks coffee, and we're also giving in Samada, etc. Can I ask everyone to please keep their mics on if possible, please, so that we don't interfere? I've, I've just muted. All right, go ahead, Senator. Sorry. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, making sure that the line is fast. I, I, I'm very worried about mass vaccinations. Uh, because if they get together in a group, we have to make sure that we are stringent in our uh, operations because if they're all together and they're all in the line, and right now we are having very, very hot days, uh, you're going to have uh, problems. Uh, and uh, I think what you need is spread out the vaccination. And one of the things that I want to propose is that not just the doctors or the medically trained or those who have been exposed to it, but if the medics in the armed forces can be trained in six in one week to be able to address uh, uh, dress wounds and uh, uh, use uh, uh, shots uh, like morphine, etc., I think high school graduates and college graduates at their medical supervision in the uh, vaccination center can help vaccinate more people. I'm a risk taker, but I think you know I'm, I'm backed up by I think the evidence that very few people have died being vaccinated. It is after the vaccination where I think it's also part of the rough and tumble of the big uh, uh, pharma companies, you know, trying to out, outclass the other, uh, trying to get market share where they there's so much Facebook. That's why it is the epoch of incredulity. It's the epoch of Facebook uh, being used to propagate lies. And it's important that we do that. Thank you very much. Let's stop doing that. 
Thank you, uh, Senator. We'll call in Robert Harland to ask the next, the next question. Robert, are you? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Good morning, Senator right. Gordon. Uh, first of all, um, can I congratulate your team in Bacolod City? I'm stuck here for a while and we've been using your facilities and uh, that's been terrific. Uh, very friendly, very efficient and very fast. So congratulations to your team. Thank here. you. All great. Well, my, thank you. My question is um, really about uh, the Red Cross and its plans for the future in terms of uh, providing vaccines. Will the Red Cross become a vaccine vendor? No, no, we don't, we're not, we don't make money. Well, we try to make sure that uh, uh, we speed up the process. Uh, uh, Robert, we have been vaccinating for measles. We have been vaccinated, uh, doing polio prevention. Uh, I can show you pictures of our people riding boats, riding uh, horses to go up uh, mountainous terrain to reach uh, our people. Uh, in the rural areas, and I think we can easily do that. See that lady riding on a horse uh, with a vaccine box? Uh, they're quite well trained, and I'm very, very proud of them, just as I'm very proud of the uh, uh, volunteers that went into PGH yesterday with their uh, self contained breathing apparatus. So, what I, what I actually meant was uh, you are providing testing services, which, which are done privately. Will the Red Cross be providing vaccines privately at any stage? Well, I don't know what you mean by privately. Uh, vaccination must be a public process. Uh, we bought uh, AstraZeneca when we thought, uh, not to be critical, but the vaccine uh, procurement was quite slow. But now they're catching up. But before they could catch up, we have already ordered 200,000 Moderna uh, doses. So we're really going to vaccinate 100,000 people. And uh, there is a, lot, a reservation line it's getting longer and longer every day. I didn't want to say that right there because I knew everybody's going to demand all kinds of things and come out with all kinds of uh, fake news. Uh, but uh, I'd, I'd like to set the record straight. Right now, uh, we will be charging 3,500 to recover the cost uh, of our payment of the vaccines from Moderna, but at the same time pay for our administrative costs. We have to have PPEs, we have to uh, have our people uh, uh, fed uh, and uh, they have to have uh, you know, uh, support uh, in terms of uh, the vaccination. And if you uh, count the uh, other things like electricity and uh, the ambulance, et cetera, et cetera, I think that's a fair thing to do. And uh, uh, we have also vaccinated uh, right now for AstraZeneca and for Sinovac, and uh, that's for free. But for those who want to get ahead, uh, a lot of people are uh, vaccinated. They don't want to be vaccinated by anything other than uh, uh, and I don't want to do size other than the top two brands and the top three brands, if you like. Uh, and uh, uh, we, you know, the less people uh, out there uh, uh, with no vaccination, the better. Robert. Robert, you. do you have a follow-up question? That's fine. Thank you. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Senator. Right. By the way, I just follow up. Uh, we are, we are not allowed to. Uh, uh, sell because uh, by Moderna. Uh, initially, I, I was kind of peeved that they thought that we were selling because I wanted to make sure that the poor people also get Moderna. Why should uh, those who can afford only get it? No? So already, even with that, as I announced it, uh, there's one company that says we'll vaccinate 7,000 of our employees with Moderna and we're willing to add another 7,000 for the poor. And that was the whole objective of it. But since that is not... Uh, uh, acceptable to Moderna, we have to follow, and uh, we're not going to do that. But you know, uh, you fall in line, uh, you pay the cost, and we're fine. Okay. Um, do we have questions from the local press? If we, we don't see any volunteers at the moment, uh, so for now, we'll 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 enter, allow another question from a me FOCAP member, Jaime Jimmy, who's now in New York. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Senator Gordon, thank you for outlining uh, the um, specific responses to the immediate uh, pandemic, which is vac the importance of vaccination. My question is more kind of long term or systemic. Um, uh, how important is it to that we, the country, um, set up a so a new a proposed new cabinet level 
uh, ministry that is in charge of responding to emergencies, including pandemics. Um, do you support that? And then second, um, do you support the, the uh, need for a uh, national ID system, which I think has been, uh, would have been very useful in response, in tra contact tracing, in distributing ayuda, but because we don't have, um, do you support that? Let me point out that uh, uh, I am, I'm willing to support an office of uh, disasters, all right? Uh, even the uh, nomenclature is wrong. <laughs> you know? uh, actually, you already have uh, uh, what you call the disaster uh, risk reduction. I co authored that. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and the RMO. And what you need to do is beef it up, get good people in it, make sure that they have the communication capable uh, uh, responses. I have not seen, for example, any missives from them that uh, explaining COVID, uh, they can get into the air lanes and make sure that they do that. Uh, like for example, if there is a war, uh, they'll say, go to the uh, go to the basements of your house, go to the air raid uh, uh, And that's been done by countries like Britain and other places. So, so I would rather have uh, them uh, uh, picked up, uh, rather have a lot of training there at, because if you put up another cabinet, it will take a long time before they're able to organize. And, uh, uh, why fix something that ain't broken? Uh, uh, let's just look at it and uh, fine tune uh, where we've fallen. We ain't done so bad, like I said. You know, uh, other countries, uh, as I said, five, uh, America has had 500,000 deaths. So for that matter, uh, uh, England has had several lockdowns, or uh, Italy and Spain. But it's not good enough to say just because uh, they have more, we're better. We're not better because one death is one death too many. Now, as for the other question, in so far as uh, can you help me out, Jimmy? Uh, my memory is national not... national ID system. Well, the yeah. national ID uh, was uh, uh, has already been approved, uh, and uh, it will facilitate uh, doing business with the government. It will facilitate a lot of things that, uh, for example, elections. You could actually verify who are uh, going to vote, uh, but it should not be a way upon which. Uh, for example, what is happening right now, and I'm very concerned about that, that they're even going house to house and asking who are the people in this house, all right? Or uh, for that matter, anything moved, uh, done by, for example, even with community uh, uh, kitchens, no? all right? Or pantries, no? Under uh, there are some people in the military who will say right away, oh, they're, they're communists out there. You know, uh, I can refer easily to China as Red China, but I won't because uh, communism is not, it's been uh, uh, legitimated. It's a, a form of free organization that allows us not to have a violent uh, struggle within our country. But uh, yes, uh, anything like uh, the ID system will must be put to good use. And that's where you must be very strict. And we must always guard against abuses. Uh, the other thing that uh, uh, is important for me is that uh, I will say it later, not now. It's going to uh, lengthen the... Uh, did I answer your questions, Jimmy? And, and there's another question, I think. No, that's it. That, that those are the two, two levels. I, I'm just um, thinking ahead or thinking forward. I think the response, as you said, uh, has been generally good. Uh, we, we are not doing too too badly. But my my um, my concern is how do we prevent uh, future or how do we respond to future emergencies, including earthquakes, pandemics. And I think you answer that. Well, let me tell you, I, I, I am prepared here because I read the book a long time ago called uh, uh, The Great uh, Influenza that uh, talked about 1970, 1916, 1918. Huh? Uh, and, you know, it was a quite very informative book. So as early as about uh, 12 years ago, uh, we were talking about it in the Red Cross and then uh, uh, Susie Mercado and I, I worked together, a response in case of a nuclear attack, a response in case of a pandemic, and now it's come. So I have four Ps, predict, plan, prepare, practice. You have to predict the kind of emergency you're going to have, even for typhoons, you know, weather forecasting is a way of predicting. And you have to predict how many people are going to be uh, hurt by it. So you have to make sure that you have the 
facilities. And that's why in the Red Cross, we have volunteers. You have to have volunteers in every place in the country that you can mobilize. And you have to have the logistics, and we have that. Uh, we even have uh, uh, warehouses everywhere. We're, not, we're no longer able to use the ship because we now have warehouses everywhere that are stocked with equipment. And that's why we can come out with our tents, our uh, emergency tents, uh, as well as isolation wise. In the case of the pandemic, we wanted to get uh, the people who were uh, asymptomatic uh, spreaders in the community, take them out and put them into isolation wards. I praise the Ateneo, I praise the UP, I praise La Salle, uh, Arellano, and uh, Makati, and now we're going to other municipalities and cities that have these uh, isolation centers. Uh, but you know, uh, when we finish it, it's gone down. We had uh, currently admitted Ateneo is 49, UP 111. That's a whole dorm. We fix up that dorm. Uh, 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 Daddy Consumption fix it up as well as, uh, uh, you know, we fix up the screens. We put up screens. The rest of us put up screens so that, you know, uh, to, to quell dengue. There's a lot of dengue there and they had no screen. So we put it there. And uh, also, uh, De La Salle, uh, uh, Brother Luster did a fantastic job and uh, we have it now. What we're having concerns with is that uh, right now it's down 67% from last month and we might get overconfident. And this is a very wily and vicious enemy. It can come back uh, like it has done in Singapore. It can come back with wild abandon as it's done with India. And you can, can come back uh, to Taiwan, which has been so, fully, so far, uh, was uh, pretty well sterilized from it. But now it's there. So basically, the motto of a Boy Scout is lagging handa, always be prepared. Uh, that's important. Now, by the way, the the uh, test of the Red Cross will hit 3 million this week. We are now at, uh, you can take a look at the slide, uh, 2,947,863. Uh, and the second one is 757. RITM, the government, is 500,540. So you can see uh, uh, we're far ahead. And that's, not, that's, not, that's called comfort to me. Uh, because my original intention was not to be the principal tester of the nation, but because we were quite fast. The government approached us if they can, uh, we, they can use uh, our facilities. Uh, of course, we'll, we'll use it. And in fact, they asked us to expand. Uh, and the only way I can get back the money is if we're paid by PhilHealth. We're not mercenary. We just want to get back our money and make sure that we can expand some more. We're opening up in Barn. Uh, we're already building. We finally found a lot there. And we're opening up one there uh, shortly. In the next two or three months, we will have it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Senator, we'll have a question from um, Elmer of CNN Philippines. Hello, Senator. Good morning. This is hey. Amor of CNN Philippines. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. I... sir. Sir, I'd um, like to follow up on what you said that the Philippine Red Cross is planning to charge 3,500 pesos for every Moderna shot. Sir, is this uh, the two, final two, amount two, already? Elmore, Sorry, two shots. Elmore, the two two more, more charges. It's only one charge for two doses. All right. So 3,500 pesos for the two doses, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, yes sir. Sir, is this the final amount already? And when can the public expect the Moderna vaccination to start? Oh, they, they, a lot of people are calling me. Uh, like I said, this is morning. I got uh, text messages uh, to put them into the line. Uh, uh, and uh, the shipment will come in. Uh, we even had to pay a little bit more to bring the, uh, we had to put in another billion and a half dollars, if I'm not mistaken, to be able to get the 1,200 or 1,500 doses uh, this June. Uh, and then it will start coming in July and it will go for the next few months because it's not going to happen overnight. So it's just like the government, you have to put in the money if you want. B, uh the vaccine to arrive on time and as you can see we're late because we were not able to uh make up our minds on uh, what to buy and what, what to fund, uh, uh what to spend money on sir how many doses in total of the moderna vaccines are we expecting moderna will send us 200,000 100,000 for 100,000 people 200,000 sir another question sir Those over the doses, huh? that is for 100,000 yes, people Yes, sir, 200,000 doses. Sir, over the weekend, you have a statement. You said the government can give the vaccines, can deliver the vaccines to the Philippine Red Cross no, so that your volunteers can... 
I, I said we can we can uh, vaccinate and uh, uh, I think it, there's something got lost in the translation. We want them to. Uh, we have already helped them in measles. We are willing to help here, and they have told us already. In fact, we had a meeting last Saturday uh, with Secretary Duque, Secretary Galvez, and Vince Dizon, and uh, they are going to start passing on some of the vaccines to us. And uh, all our 104 chapters in the entire country, and then some sub chapters are going uh, are going to start vaccinating. They're undergoing training as we speak. Why do we expect the Philippine Red Cross to start vaccination, sir, to help the government? We already started. Uh, we already vaccinated, I think, 3,000 from the initial supplies that have been given to us of uh, Sinovac and AstraZeneca. So the request that you made, sir, is for the, uh, I think, the AstraZeneca vaccines that were uh, ex uh, set to expire in June. Uh, we're yeah. asking the government to send the Philippine Red Cross. I'm asking the, the government to speed up the vaccination, not to give it to us. Obviously, we're not going to be able to handle. Uh, I'm just concerned that if that if it does expire and some people have been spreading, that it's going to expire. We want to be able to alleviate human suffering and do our part. We cannot handle everything. Uh, we're not Superman. Uh, I never requested that you given the vaccines. It was the government that has constantly been asking us that uh, we be prepared and to help in the vaccination effort. Uh, remember, in the law, uh, that is necessary for the existence of a Red Cross in the country. Uh, the government must accept our auxiliary role, and they must abide by our fundamental principles of humanitarianism, independence, neutrality, impartiality, and of course, voluntarism and univer uh, universality. Uh, so that's what we've been doing for the years, and if you will recall, in 1939, under the auspices of the American Red Cross, the Philippine chapter of the Red Cross sent vaccines to China in 1939. All right. Thank you, Senator. You're welcome. Thank you, Senator. Just quickly before I move on to Melo, you know, that we've spoken to some members also of the some of those who work for local government units, and they're also just waiting for the A4 category. Uh, uh, be open to, to vaccinations, LG. Is it something that you also suggest? Because I Definitely. think the duty of local government, the traditional duty of government is peace and order, health, and of course, the building of education and infrastructure. Those are the traditional duties. No? Uh, and if we have, uh, you know, since the devolution, uh, the local governments, uh, so many of them have uh, ratcheted up and they should have more doctors, more nurses that can. Vaccinate. That's why we're trying to bring in incentives uh, that uh, the doctors and the nurses and the frontliners be vaccinated along with their families so that we can have more volunteers. I have no doubt that the local government can do it as well. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll call Melo uh, Acuna, FOCAP member, to ask the question. Yeah. Good morning, Jam. Good morning, Mr. Senator. Hello, Melo. Um, good to see you. Yeah. Nice to see you again. Uh, I just want to find out your thoughts because it appears that contact tracing is the weakest link in the government. Will the, will the Philippine Red Cross get into contact tracing as well? Because, you know, my son uh, got COVID-19. He recovered uh, about um, two months ago. And nobody has knocked at our door to ask how we're doing. Uh, we do have contact oh. tracing. Yeah. Uh, we even have uh, uh, contact tracing right here. Uh, uh, where uh, you will know uh, when you go to a door that uh, some people have contacted, uh, uh, you know, uh, a COVID, and uh, it will be reported to us, and we'll report it to the part of the health. Of course, the part of the health has uh, what do they call their own uh, safe something, no? Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe, uh, stay safe uh, program. But you cannot rely on uh, technology alone. Uh, uh, contact tracing can be done by the barangays, and they have a platform for that. Not a, not a technological platform, but they have human uh, intelligence. Uh, in the barangays, they're supposed to know who's got it. Uh, the Red Cross has 143, which means 44 people in every barangay. That's why we're so fast. There's a firefight in Maguindanao or in Cotabato, or not Cotabato, was it Cotabato or Maguindanao? Uh, I knew about it right away. I knew about it right away because we have volunteers out there who will call us, text us. We have, uh, if you've been here to the Red Cross, we have an operation center. We're expanding that again so that it'll be a lot faster. The yeah. government has uh, done rather poorly in terms of contact tracing. You're right. But you see, our big problem is most Filipinos are asymptomatic. Uh, 
and that is even more dangerous. So uh, the important thing, therefore, is to trace some more. And that's why we use the asymptomatic haven would be the isolation centers in Atreo, La Salle, UP, et cetera. And I'm sure the government has also put up uh, other centers. I know Queso City is doing a great job. San Juan is doing a great job. Many, many of the municipalities are seen to do a great job. So everybody has got to be all hands on deck uh, to be able to beat this. Uh, I'm sorry that they have not been able to contact you or your daughter where he, she got it. Uh, it's important that we know that. Uh, I'm pretty used to it because remember I was mayor of Subic and we had to do contact tracing with HIV. And uh, we did a very good job. It, we, uh, we got uh, HIV out of the woodwork in, uh, at, at the time I was mayor uh, and uh, it's been fine. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's something that I am I skilled into uh, and uh, I'm always worried about that. Yeah, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, has the government settled its arrears with the Red Cross? How much do they owe you? <laughs> uh, well, uh, they owed us almost 900 million. They paid 400 million and they keep trying to re replenish the debt. At that time, they it brought it down to about 390 million, but now they are now on 400 sin seven million debt as of yesterday. Mm -hmm. And every day, now we're testing uh, 6,000 a day. Uh, this is Monday and Sunday, that was Sunday. But uh, we average about 10 to 11,000 a day. Mm -hmm. So okay. each test has, has to be paid. Uh, there are reagents, uh, we pay a lot of uh, electricity, we pay our med techs and doctors and nurses top dollar uh, in terms of uh, Philippine standards. Uh, uh, and they get uh, uh, free hotels uh, and uh, free food uh -huh. and, and PPEs as well. Yeah, I can just imagine how you balance everything. No? But uh, has the government vowed to settle all these debts in time? Well, you know, a vow uh, is a vow. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when you implement your vow, it's another thing. Uh, I'm sure the government plans to pay it, but... Uh, uh, they, they must pay us because I don't want to stop like we did before. You know, they were taking us for granted. But the original contract was every time uh, we hit uh, a certain amount, uh, I think it was about uh, 100 million, yeah. uh, they replenished the amount right away. Uh, it never happened. And what happened was the private international humanitarian organization of the Red Cross became the ones that were fronting for the government. That's ridiculous. You know, never saw anything as ridiculous as that. That's why... I uh, give a lot of uh, thanks to our volunteers, our med techs, our doctors, and that's why the ICRC and IFRC, our sister societies internationally, they have nothing but utmost respect, uh, the dedication, and the uh, uh, and the effort made by the Red Cross. And we just had World Red Cross Day the other day, and we had them as uh, we had them as Zoom, and everybody from the president of the IFRC, the secretary general, and the regional director. We're all places at the same time, uh, the ICRC, we're all places for it's what we do. And Teddy yeah. Doxin, as usual, was beside himself in, uh, uh, you know, uh, praises. But we're not after praises. Uh, thank you very much for the praises. Uh, but like I, like my dad used to say, your credit is good, but we need cash. <laughs> Let me just ask you this, one last point from me. Uh, Singapore declared a lockdown when 70 cases were reported. In the Philippines, we have thousands of new COVID-19 cases, and yet we're about to reopen the economy. How do you look at that? Isn't that a bit weird, uh, so to speak? Always preparation has to be made. Uh, uh, Singapore is a very disciplined society. It's a, practically a command society. Mm -hmm. uh, so 70, they don't want it to go to 700, and later on to 7,000 or even 700,000. And I, I, I salute Singapore. Many of my things that I do when I was mayor of Longapo, I visited Singapore and uh, was very eclectic like the Japanese after uh, the uh, Tokugawa regime, they went out and copied uh, Britain, they copied America, and which the Chinese have also done, and the Koreans have also done. Uh, but can we do so right now? Well, we, we can, and uh, I think uh, we have to make haste slowly here. We have to make sure that we are able to monitor it well, uh, everything now is speed and uh, we need to rely on very good computer systems so that we know uh, what we're facing. I mean, I, I get, I, I know what, how much blood we have at any time in any place in the country in terms of uh, 
blood supplies and in terms of testing, I get the report every day. And if they fall behind, they get a memo from me and I'm not very, very nice when I write memos. I really <laughs> like that. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Senator. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you Jam. Thank you, Melo. I just quit, very quickly, I'd like to, before I move on to Jim, you talked about um, coordinating with BARM about vaccinations. Does it mean, Senator, that uh, some of your PRC volunteers uh, and members, frontline workers, will also be facilitating in the vaccination process itself uh, in conflict and remote areas? They're already doing that. Uh, like I said, did you see the lady with the horse? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to show it again. Uh, our vaccination uh, goes uh, to no bounds, you know, uh, uh, and I'm very proud of them because they were able to do two million in the last three years. No? Uh, but this one is COVID, uh, and uh, we need to do that. Uh, even the way we distribute relief, we don't have long lines. We follow uh, distancing. Uh, we give boxes of food, and we knock on the door, and we leave the box there. We make the, somebody sign. And we are, uh, we've been doing that uh, of late. Even now, you can see uh, our volunteers and uh, uh, these are uh, uh, for, um, uh, the last effort that we did here was uh, for uh, uh, single parents or single grandmothers or PWDs, persons with disabilities. And you can see we bring them by the box. I think I have a box here that I can I'll be happy to show you. Uh, and uh, 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 is that the food? Yeah, here, yeah, that's right. So they get a week supply. They get uh, a lot of rice. Uh, how many kilos? Uh, six, six kilos of rice. That's a week supply, and they even have fresh eggs. See, there you can see it there. That's good. Uh, and uh, they have uh, hot dogs and uh, masks and uh, alcohol and uh, you know anything that will sustain a family uh, so that uh, uh, their suffering is alleviated in our isolation centers. We provide also a box, which contains a lot of things like, uh, uh, here's the box. I can show you this, uh, there's the box. So when you go in there, you're happy, you have a plate, but uh, sometimes we don't give plates because we do use paper, so uh, the housing is minimized. Then we give it a pulse oximeter meter. Uh, we give a thermometer uh, and uh, uh, make sure that also they have the alcohol and that they don't have, they have toothbrushes and toothpaste uh, and many other things. So, but they go in there, they're happy. Some of them don't want to leave, but they have to leave because uh, we can. But now we're converting that also into a vaccination center. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that uh, input, Senator. We'll call on uh, FOCAP board member Jim Gomez of Associated Press. Jim? Yes, it's got the initials of my father, JG, Jim Gordon. Hi, Jim. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me, Jim? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Uh, good morning, and thank you for coming to us. Uh, you look good. In, in, you. Fact, in fact, you look presidential. Oh, really? You always <laughs> have good taste and judgment. <laughs> All I have to do is say, acta non verba. <laughs> sir, uh, among maybe a hundred politicians talking about the pandemic every day, no? Uh, you, you know the nuts and bolts of this uh, crisis. You're, you're very grassrooted, very grounded, very hands-on, and that makes you an important voice in this uh, problem, an important authority. So let me ask you at this point, and you've been at it from the very first day you know, up to now. Uh, let me ask you at this point of the pandemic, what, what are your worst fears? What are the red flags that the government and the people should be worried about? And just to add to that quickly, uh, do you think an India scenario is still a potential scenario in the Philippines? Thank you. Well, I'll go from the end. Yes, I think there's an Indian scenario uh, that can happen in the Philippines. It's, it's, isn't it ironic that in India, they ran out of oxygen bottles? We are even uh, trying to uh, put up, uh, uh, we're looking at the numbers, uh, but we don't have the money for that. Uh, principally enough, I got support from the international community, uh, Direct Cross, IFRC, and many of our, our friends in business uh, support us. Uh, we're thinking of an oxygen generation plant, a humble one, so that uh, people can get uh, oxygen. So an Indian scenario is very, very possible here, especially uh, it's a very, very vicious scenario, a vicious uh, virus that they have there. 
So what should we be looking at? Well, the testing, are we, are we doing our job? Uh, those are your, that's your dashboard. No? Uh, are we doing a decent job testing? Uh, uh, and that's why I even uh, got the uh, uh, saliva test uh, approved by the government, and we're the only ones that are allowed the saliva test. I don't believe in uh, quick fixes, like for example, rapid testing. I think that did more harm than good, because a lot of people thought it was good, but it, apparently they gave a lot of false uh, uh, negatives. No, so it's important that we realize that we're using the system, and you can see what happened. Well, what happened uh, last time is we got overconfident. Uh, we opened up and look at what happened to us. We were lazy in terms of uh, uh, policing our people. Uh, you know, all you have to do is uh, do you have a mask? And if you don't have a mask, the government should constantly provide masks and uh, uh, availability. Uh, and uh, if I had my way, I, I was a Procter & Gamble guy. I'm not going to say the brand right now. They have not paid me. Uh, but uh, I will say I will even give... Uh, uh, a bar of soap uh, in their pockets, you know, with uh, and and also uh, uh, make sure that uh, exaggeratingly enough, uh, even a metering stick, so that people are not going to come near them. And uh, there, there are many things that we can do. Not eating together, uh, that's important. But uh, again, tracing, like Melo said. I mean, Melo had it uh, had the number right. Uh, how can you find something that you do not know where it is? No. Uh, and you know it's not difficult because if you see a lot, it's like a crime report. You know, uh, you have a crime map, and you show where the uh, severity of the pandemic is hitting particular communities, and you go in there the way right, lock it down before it spreads, and lock perhaps an extra uh, few uh, uh, kilometers uh, from that area and start testing everybody, so that you you prevent it. No, you prevent it. Uh, you know, I always say protect and preserve to prosper. That's my slogan in one. And then, of course, the vaccination. Uh, are we fast with the vaccination? I don't think so. Initially, we didn't have any vaccines. So perhaps the government's way was to say, uh, we will have a lot of restrictions. We'll have to have this and that, this and that. And here up non, he mga tao na mag fill up. No? And then we also locked down our borders and we spent a lot of money putting them in hotels. But that's uh, something that we cannot do without. And then you have to use all the technologies such as uh, uh, you know, your cell phone. You have to have your uh, code, QR code. Uh, all, uh, all public places should have a QR detector so that when you go in there, they will know if you have had COVID. In Hong Kong, when you enter a restaurant, they will know uh, that you've been exposed to somebody with COVID and they will call you right away. Efficiency is important. Local government's role is severely important. If the local government is uh, lukewarm or is uh not active uh, uh uh complacent we're in trouble and above all we should hit the families communication is important civil defense uh, should be able to come out from time to time not propaganda like uh announcements but sim simply say the following areas have a lot of pandemic right now please lock your doors mona until we can get you immunized uh, uh vaccine vaccinated or at least have you tested uh, we cannot be reactive. All these things must be done. And you must have a quick reaction force by way of one. In SARS, I was Secretary of Tourism. I worked with Secretary of Health Dairit right away. And we worked together as an airport. We worked together uh, in one area in Pangasinan. Uh, we, uh, uh, we went there and isolated that town, I remember. Uh, in, uh, for example, one of the things that I fear here is uh, meningococcemia. And uh, in Baguio, there was an overreaction. And I had to go there and say, no, there's no meaning of oxymia. In fact, I was seen in the market with my wife. We were not on holiday just to make sure that everybody can proceed with their jobs. The important thing here is to get back on our feet, get tourism going, uh, and get, that's the easiest way, way to do. They can get jobs. You know, we've become entrepreneurs. A lot of people are in the delivery business, bicycles, motorcycles, and everything like that. Restaurants at home, you know, they're, they're, they're doing that. Uh, but what we need to do is get our business back in. And business has got to make sure that they watch their people. The Department of Transportation, they have to make sure that they do their job. You know that you've always had traffic in the MRT and the LRT. You should have more buses. You have uh, practically been very strict with the buses. Get all the buses like Victory Liner. Uh, they have a lot of buses that are not running. Pay them and put people 
uh, one seat apart from each other, uh, only one per seat, and they can go to work. The important thing is to get people to work. Put bus stops in every corner. So people, will, they don't want to have to uh, uh, go a long way. I think we can do that. Uh, it's easy to say, but it takes resoluteness. It takes command. It takes uh, you know uh, monitoring uh, and making sure that it is implemented. Those are just some of the thoughts that I have. I hope I was able to answer it, Jimmy. Very well, uh, Senator. Thank you. Jim, do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, uh, just quickly, uh, Senator, I, I heard that in the Philippine Red Cross, many of your staff have become infected. And I was just curious, you know, like there's many government agencies now you know, uh, dealing with internal infections. I, I heard that it's bad at the Department of Foreign Affairs. It's bad at the in the military, the PNP. So in, you're in your agent, your Red Cross is in the front line of this pandemic, so it would be very bad if you if your staff would be hit. No, so what's the situation with the infection of your staff? How are you dealing with this? How are you able to still deliver your services? And how do you keep yourself from being infected? You're everywhere, and we've not heard you. You know, become threatened by this virus. Well, uh, you know, we have 418. Thank you, Jim. We have had 418 people infected. You know. Really? Uh, at the moment, we have 20 active right now. But uh, every time it happens, throughout the entire country. You know? So in Sambuanga, we found out that three of them were infected. So right away, we were very stringent about that. We asked them, have you been going out? And you know, you have to stay indoors. In the, in the beginning, people in the hotels, they would come out of their rooms and make chismis, you know? Uh, so a lot of them got sick. So we learned from that lesson. You do not go out. At the moment you go out, turn on your TV set or go to sleep because you need the rest. And that brought it down. Uh, even in our, uh, we have a lot of work at home in, in the Red Cross. But at the same time, when they're cold, uh, they will come around. And uh, very important. My secretary general really works here, doesn't go home anymore. She sleeps here and, uh, uh, because uh, there's just too much work. And uh, if it were not for Kate, I would be staying here myself. Uh, uh, but uh, Kate is also uh, immune uh, compromised. Uh, so uh, I have to be very careful. Yesterday when I came from PJs, I had to take a double shower, put alcohol all over. And, uh, you know, uh, we didn't sleep together again last night. And we're not going to be doing that for the next nine days or 10 days. So our people know that, uh, that uh, when somebody gets infected, they have to take care of themselves and above all, take care of their families because they can hurt them. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, John. Thank you, Senator. Anyone else would like to ask a question? I think Barnes, Barnes wants I, to ask a question. Yes, uh, good morning, Senator Gordon. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, and just... You got your Facebook open already? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we've been on Facebook for more than an hour. Good, so for the most part, we've been on Facebook. Yeah, Thanks. so Jam, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take over from here. Um, for about uh, 10 minutes, I've got a few questions, <laughs> a couple of questions for Senator Gordon, since I don't see anyone coming after me. Um, <laughs> um, just going back to the issue of uh, vaccination, from what I'm hearing from you all throughout the morning, um, is it safe for me to assume, that, correct me if I'm wrong, of course, that you are against a mega vaccination site? Um, and... In relation to that, what really is our problem here? Because during the earlier part of the pandemic, or maybe not the earlier part of the pandemic, but late last year, we were talking about the problem of vaccine supplies, of course. But now we have a surplus of vaccines here in the Philippines. Senator Sherwin Gachalian, just uh, not, not surplus uh, in the sense that uh, you know we have more vaccines than the population, but Senator Sherwin Gachalian tweeted this morning that only 20% of their senior citizens have gotten vaccinated. You know, people have not been showing up for their vaccination schedules. So which is, you know, which is the problem that we should be addressing first here? The supply or is it the hesitation? So uh, I guess two questions there. Again, let me answer the second question first because that's a... Uh... Well, there is a hesitancy uh, on the part of any of our uh, populace. No, no, nobody wants to get a shot. 
Secondly, they're afraid that another Deng Vaksha is going to happen. So that's mean poor, that means poor, poor communication. And the other thing is, you're right. The vaccine came a little late. And, uh, and even, you're right, right now, due to the period that we have a surplus, so now we really have to uh, run to make sure that this is distributed right away. And that's where our concerns must be. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, we have the manpower who can administer the shots. And that's why I had those proposals, uh, speed up, uh, streamline the process of vaccination. Uh, I'm glad the Secretary Duque reacted right away. No more BP taking. You know, Secretary Duque has a DOH that has been uh, that has been toxic for a long time. Uh, there's been a lot of allegations of corruption there, not only before Secretary, not only during Secretary Duque's time, but even during my time as a young delegate to the Constitutional Convention, I was the youngest. I was approached by some delegates, and I will. And I said, come on, let's go to DOH. They will give us a quota. What's a quota? Because we're delegates, we can get the quota so we can give to our province. I said, I don't deal with that. And that's when I said, oh my gosh, we have a problem. But, uh, you know, it's been going on uh, uh, spurts and bursts. Uh, we had a good uh, DOH with uh, a very, very uh, uh, open uh, Flavier, you know, uh, and uh, gave it a good image. Uh, uh, you know, walang magaling dito sa so virus na ito, so vaccine na ito, as you can see. But uh, yes, uh, there is hesitation, but that can be done. That's why I'm saying, bigyan natin ng uh, donut <laughs> para pag nagpa-vaccinate. Magkatuwa lang tayo. Pakakuha ka ng uh, donut, good for one week. One one donut lang. <laughs> uh, for, and you can uh, eat it within one week. No, And we're doing that. Starbucks and other uh, restaurants, they're beginning to come in. Uh, I'm not really... Uh, put my back into it yet, but I started, and I I'm glad I'm still 100% in ba batting. No, uh, those two already agreed. So once once they see others doing that, maybe it will happen. Now uh, bring vaccines closer to the people. Uh, make sure that people are well educated. Uh, make sure that uh, uh, we have people uh, who will uh, uh, say that a lot better. You know, that, the, to me, ako ginagawa ko nga, may ginagawa ko ngayon. Wow, bakuna. Laging una sa bakuna ang mga tao rito, you know. Uh, uh, you know, instigating promotions like that. Uh, and DOH is doing a, a good job of late in terms of uh, getting them. But you know, you have to get, get the message across. You know, you don't you don't get bakuna, you die. You know, uh, uh, when you get hit, no. Or wow, balik hanap buhay, magpabakuna. Uh, wow, balik trabaho. Wow, balik eskwela. Uh, magpatest at magpabakuna. All these things. I think speak for themselves, and that's important. Now, the first question was uh, the mega vaccination site. I I did say I was against it. I said I am worried about it. We better have the controls. We better have to make sure that the appointments are kept, that you don't overload it, and that uh, maraming ang papasok yan. Pag natapos yan, uh, walang nasa labas, walang papasok hanggang tapos. Give them 15 minutes, and they must be on time. Otherwise, uh, 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 they will not be allowed in, and that's uh, that's important. Uh, that's hard to do. That is hard. Alam niyo naman na maraming pasaway yan. Alam niyo naman maliday yung iba. So, anakakatago yan. Remember last week or two weeks ago, you had that big fiasco in Kaloocan. Uh, not the fault of everybody, you know, but the people want to go out. It's hot, so they all went to this resort. And you know, I wonder if the DOH has uh, checked. Uh, how many people got COVID that way, uh, and how many of them are asymptomatic? So, yeah, it's a difficult problem. I understand what the government is undergoing. I've been in government for a long time, and uh, a lot easy to talk, but a lot better if we fix the problem. Okay, um, if you don't mind, I have a uh, non-pandemic uh, question because um, when we started this forum, you mentioned that you have pinpointed cases of extrajudicial killings, and in particular, motorcycle riding gunmen. Um, but in, if I'm not mistaken, in 2016 or maybe early or maybe early 2017, you concluded your drug war probe, saying that there is no state-sponsored killing, and that uh, President Duterte, there is no evidence that President Duterte. Uh, ordered state-sponsored or extrajudicial killings. Uh, so are you now saying that there are state-sponsored killings? Are you now saying that uh, President Duterte may be accountable 
four extrajudicial killings. Are you sure? I said there is no state sponsored killing. I said there was no evidence to show that the government is uh, uh, organized uh, a dead squad. And uh, if we don't have evidence to that, how can we do anything? Uh, and so therefore, uh, if they use motorcycles and the motorcycles are stolen and it is not reported, you have a motorcycle uh, weapon against uh, uh, decent citizens. Uh, what I said was, the, and I even said it in front of the president. I said, uh, Mr. President, I don't think you should. Uh, uh, I don't think you should uh, keep saying "barilinyo" uh, mga police. You know, he tend to he tend he uh, he tendency to hyperbole, but that's in a local setting. According to mayor. Uh, you have to look tough and uh, you have to send the message across to many of the criminals in this country. So there is a miscommunication there. Communication is so important in this day and age as it's always been, only it's faster today. So I pinpointed how many people have been killed, <clears throat> how many people have been killed since uh, for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, uh, you can see uh, uh, almost. Uh, 19,000 or uh, I, I know that uh, uh, yeah, almost 9,000 people have been killed. Uh, uh, am I reading it right? In the last 10 years? Uh, in the last five months, in the last five months, five years, five years, the last five years, 19,000 have been killed. 19,000 incidents of riding in tandem. So we came out with a law that says if you lose your plate, you have to report it within two days. Otherwise, you're in trouble. If, if it is used against uh, somebody in a crime, you can practically be uh, an accessory because of your negligence. No? Uh, so now we have bigger plates. Uh, anticipation is important. And I there you go. There is the plate. Uh, the smaller plates uh, are the old plates. Because it's a business. It's a business. Lalagyan ko raw ng plakang malaki doon sa harap ng manibela. Uh, yan, yan, doble plaka ba yan? O yan, wala, walang plate yan. And I have a plate number here uh, that will show you that it's a sticker uh, that uh, we're going to have uh, uh, in the front uh, seat para at least uh, the bar there. There's a sticker. See the sticker? It's a small one. Uh, but the big plate is this one. So that's what I call taking a bite out of crime. It's, it's just like more policemen on the streets. It's just like having a, a neighborhood watch. It's like making sure that you record how many thefts occur or how many killings occur in a certain place and you will know that there's something going on. But we, as a country and as a government, people and government alike, we ignore it. We choose to look at the other way. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to report and I'll show you. Take a, take a look at the, uh, take a look at the, uh, uh, take a look at this, you know, a barangay captain, a barangay, uh, a uh, person is banning the barric the uh, the COVID uh, thing uh, in uh, Pampanga, Florida Blanca. Take a look at this. See, see, uh, there's a motorcycle that will stop in front of the barangay. Take a look at how close it is. There's even a bicycle guy. Can you stop it, Mona, please? And then, then they will shoot him, and then he will try to shoot the other barangay on the other side. That's how. And no case. Well, in this all. Unless nakuna mo na binabaril talaga yung tao, katulad doon nangyari doon sa kaso ng salbahing police sa Tarlac, wala tayo na susolve. I even had to correct the policeman to say, hey, hindi pwedeng case solve just because meron na kayong uh, suspect. Hindi case solve yan. Until you put him behind bars, you cannot say case solve. That is the problem. As early as when I was in college in Ateneo, I would say we are complacent as a people. We're apathetic, you know? And uh, I plastered the whole campus of my university at that time. We cannot be apathetic. We cannot be spectators. We cannot be outsiders because ultimately it will affect us. And when my father was killed, when I was a young man uh, working in Procter & Gamble, I can tell you uh, that changed my whole life. I mean, even before that, there were three attempts on his life until the fourth attempt finally succeeded. And what is that? It's the same story. People being allowed to escape from prison. And that guy escaped by way of a tricycle. And that's why in Olongapo, you see all tricycles have big body numbers and they have their names on the back on their t-shirts. And we had no crime when I was mayor because of that. Mm -hmm. So 
it's really seeking a bite out of crime. And you know, why do we have, you know, if, if, if Duterte were to run today, I would raise it as an issue. What did you do about this? Uh, did you do something about the killings? Or uh, I've delivered many privileged speeches in, the, in, in, in the, the halls of the Congress. Some of them, we were successful. There was a young lady, uh, his father was a Muslim, his mother was a Christian. She was a, a teacher in UP. When she got out of a call center, in a blue job, in a Lusa, in a privileged piece of it, I even went there, and I didn't know where I was going. It annoys me, not, not annoys, it, it really hurts me because it's a nightmare that keeps coming back and back and back. I'll yeah. show you another one. Uh, a car coming out uh, of a school uh, in Isabella, broad uh, daylight, high noon, on United Nations Day. I'm uh, really having a hard time with my computer. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, take a look at this. Please focus. Yeah. See the car, black car, mother and child, father driving. There you go. With impunity. Bang, 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 bang. Machine guns. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, malis. Nakita, pumara yung koche. Di ni alam, so the people that he was, uh, was able to get out on that, uh, on the other door. And they ran inside. So when they left already, look at how in, impunity works in this country. May tricycle driver doon. Wala nakita yan. Bumalik sila, hinabol pa nila sa loob. They ran after them. And it's about uh, almost a minute they were choose, chasing him until they decided all, we wounded him enough. And then they ran outside, ride a motorcycle. May tricycle dito sa likod. May mga tao dyan. Ito pa ang truck. Makikita yan. Mahahanap po kagad yung blue truck para makita kung saan nagpunta yan. And nothing happened. I had to bring that guy here incognito on an ambulance and hide him in one of the major hospitals in this country. But that's the way it is. It's so easy to get away with murder. And that's the problem that we must focus. in the political problem na, oh, ito, sigana. you have to have evidence. We're still a democracy. What? If we do it without uh, uh, due process, are we fulfilling our role as a, a democratic country? If we just point and say, oh, ito, ito pumapatay dyan, tapos walang ebidensya. Look at what's happening now. I have reservations. Bigla namatay si yung babae na Chinese na uh, drug lord doon. Namatay si uh, yung uh, uh, si Yuk, Yuk Lai. No? Namatay yung isa. Si uh, yung siga doon. Si Ecleo. Namatay rin doon. Meron pa. Before that, namamatay na lang. Bigla na lang nililiping. Well, I've got bigger fish to fry. And nasasabihin ko ngayon. But actually, we should investigate everything. Right, right. So I understand and I think we all agree that uh, there is this culture of impunity. And I agree also that, um, and I understand that what you're saying is that there is no concrete evidence that um, many of these killings are state-sponsored. But you're not removing the possibility that at least a number of these killings are state-sponsored. Yes, when, when that guy Marcos uh, uh, was killed in Leyte, the chief of police, uh, uh, Marcos was the one who came in, Lieutenant Colonel Marcos. He went into jail uh, in the dead of night with his people, went into the prison, opened it, demanded it be opened, and they plugged the guy down, the father of that uh, very famous drug dealer, that infamous drug dealer. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I don't have it right now, but I can get to you in a minute. Uh, I've got good stuff here normally. Uh, maybe they can throw a piece of paper to me naming the guy's name. But those things, I, I confronted the president at the time, together with uh, Gringo Honasan and Ping Lakson. And we said, we don't agree with that, Mr. President. Bakit yung sasabihin, anong nangyari? Hindi na walang narinig, nilipat na lang siya ng probinsya. That has always been the problem with the national police. Pag may nagawang kasalanan, ililipat, send him to another province, uh, and uh, uh, he will be the problem there. Uh, his name is J.B. Sebastian, yung namatay recently. Uh, yan, nag, uh, nagko-concert sa loob ng kulungan yan. And daming I mean, impunity. You know that there have been 11 people killed. All Bureau of Prisons uh, uh, people are riding in tandem. So, you know, we don't, uh, the media should also focus it. After all, you're being attacked as well. How many people have been killed by riding in tandem uh, in the provinces uh, uh, with that? So, yeah, to me, extrajudicial killing, I was confronted there by Senator. Uh, uh, Leahy in America with uh, when I was lobbying for the veterans and our ambassador Ga, very good ambassador, was saying that uh, 
uh, to help us. And then he came in and he says, we're not going to get a cent until you solve this extrajudicial killings. And I said, hey, Chicago has more crimes than we have here. Uh, you, you don't talk to the Chicago people. Uh, we're just your favorite whipping boy. By the way, my father was assassinated. And if the soldiers do that, maybe they do it because they see uh, their people during combat being beheaded or being uh, killed. And you know, human nature is human nature. They'll try to do that. Unfortunately, we don't punish and we don't investigate as well. If we investigate, how many, how many crimes have been uninvestigated? How many cold cases do we have? I have these statistics somewhere, but we really have to act. And that is something that we have to address. You cannot have a country unless you provide unity and stability. And not have a country as if our country is not healthy. That's what we, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, I was kidding when I said that I was taking over for Jam, but now I really have to take over for Jam because uh, she has a thing that she needs to attend to. Um, there's no one else, I think, um, who wants to ask more questions. So okay, Jam is much prettier than you, Barnes. <laughs> I agree. Uh -huh. Totally agree. Um, but um, I do want to ask just one quick question uh, before we end this forum uh, about uh, the missing, alleged missing PhilHealth funds. So PhilHealth has said that they have liquidated the alleged 15 billion pesos that's been missing. So, I mean, is this a case closed for you? Or, you know, do you have more questions you want to investigate more? Barnes, did you not follow my investigation on Deng Baksha? That is also feel help. Uh, did you not follow our investigation when they were not paying? And there's a mafia inside. Binaliktat pa ako eh. Yung mafia, yung isang member ng mafia pa, ginamit ang nag-testify. And I disagreed with my colleagues there. I just kept quiet because the Senate President, Ping Lakson, uh, and they, they, they came out with something. Who has gone to jail since that investigation? I submitted my investigation uh, to Sadeng Baksha, including President Aquino. I'm not afraid to say that. Uh, had to answer for it. The C is a do sa ZTE ang investigation. President Makapagal has to explain, and uh, because uh, you have to explain why you had to leave your husband to go uh, sign uh, this uh, important contract with China. So to my mind, uh, naglulukohan tayo. Eh. Are we serious? Bakit pa kayo ginagawa yung investigador ang uh, ano? Kasi aggressive yung blue ribbon. Uh, you know, in your face, calling the shots where they may, getting evidence such as uh, commissioners of immigration, accepting money in uh, Soler and then bringing it out, nakita sila sa TV, tapos binawasang pa agad yung isang katoto nila yung pera sa hood, din nila pa doon sa party uh, nung kanilang brad, pagkatapos eh, pakita mo umiiyak, tapos may watch, hindi ko alam kung ano yung watch yung paneral ba yun, paneral, mahal raw yun. And you know, everybody was laughing at these guys and they're still in jail right now. Uh, Taguba of customs are still in jail. Uh, even that lady, Tatad, is still in jail. And then we have uh, 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 we have dislodged this chief PNP, uh, what's his name, General uh, Albayalde, uh, for crimes that he committed in uh, uh, and we gave a very strong report. Eh, wala eh. Kung talaga seryoso, dapat tinanggal na yung uh, Lieutenant Colonel, yung Major na ginawa. Pinremote pa, nilipat pa from uh, Sambuaga, tapos nilagay sa but as a uh, tagaytay, do siya nilagay, as head. So how can, you know, we can beat it, provided you have a president, you have a Department of Local Government and PNP that is serious, and the police commission simplifies its investigation. I even put out plebs, even when I was not a senator, I put out plebs using, uh, helping, asking my, mom, my, my wife to do that. People's law enforcement boards, let me ask you, we got that approved. Even the people in the community can, a kick a policeman out when they do the crime. I don't know if you know that. It's there. Never implemented in full. No propaganda whatsoever with the government. Why? Pag ginamit mo yan, baka kalahati ng polis mawawala. Kalahati ng polis sigurado ka mawawala. Okay. All right. Um, we have one last question. We'll let the uh, former ambassador, Wilfrido Villacorta, ask a question for um, Senator Gordon. Good Thank morning, you. Ambassador. Thank you. Ambassador. Senator Gordon, um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, if you remember me, uh, 
we have had debates in the Constitutional Commission uh, when I was a member in 1986. And uh, they, they were polite. Uh, it's very hard to debate with an Athenian. You know, but anyway. Um, you know, I know you went to LaSalle, but we cannot be perfect. All of us cannot be perfect. <laughs> I, I taught at La Salle, but uh, when, when, yeah, uh, I, I am facing um, health issues now, so I have to, to hear that. You have to pardon my lack of fluency, but I wrote down what I wanted to say briefly. Um, listening to you, Senator, was an eye opener to me, for me. It brought the hope back to me, Mr. Senator. I remember what Arnold Toynbee said in his famous theory of challenge and response. He said that these countries or those countries which fail to recognize to re and respond to the challenges they are confronted with are doomed. In this condition that we are in, we need a leader who is intellectually and morally equipped to address the pandemic crisis firsthand. First in the technological demands of the digital age, because for your age, for our age, you are very much a techie and the realities and nuances of geopolitics and world political economy. You have provided us more choices with more choices in these coming elections. Please, Mr. Senator, give us the Filipino people the privilege of uh, the privilege of making this best choice in this coming elections. The right response to the challenge we face and the response uh, response for um, and, and the response that our country must make. Uh, and the response that the Filipino people deserve. Thank you for listening. Run for president, please. Thank you, Ambassador Villacorta for that. Uh, okay, so I'll segue. I'll pick up. I'll Thank uh, the ambassador for his kind words and his uh, uh, thoughts. Uh, uh, and I will answer your questions afterwards. Uh, uh, to me, the bigger question is not who is going to run. Uh, but uh, we all have to help our countrymen make the right choice, uh, come out with the right issues, look for the integrity, the track record, the uh, ability to change things in a crisis, uh, turn it around, the ability to inspire. Okay. Um, I, I think you uh, answered the question already there, uh, Senator Corbin, um, but- um, Not even announce anything. <laughs> uh, yes, but, but maybe we'll expand the, the question a little bit more because we did promise our, um, participants and audience to ask you what your plans are for 2022. And if you're not running for the presidency, who do you think um, will likely take a crack at the presidency? And who will likely inherit everything that Duterte will leave behind? Barnes, put, it in, put, put yourself in my situation. I've been in the Red Cross for about 53 years. Before that, my mother was in the Red Cross for 63 years. We've been most effective. I've been in every disaster, you name it. I, I think lumutang tayo do sa earthquake ng Kabanatuan. Lumutang tayo sa Baguio. Lumutang Red Cross sa Pinatubo. Remember that iconic picture of me with the Negrito child? Uh, uh, you know, 
uh, in uh, Haiyan. We built uh, over 151,000 houses. This is uh, uh, 80,000 houses were added by Haiyan. We just built a lot of houses. A lot of people put their trust in the Red Cross because it was a sincerely changed Red Cross. It was a very, uh, at that time, uh, in all fairness to my predecessors, it was not as aggressive. It was not as uh, uh, felt in terms of uh, uh, all sectors. Now, before we were good in blood. Uh, now uh, we know where the blood is. Now we have, uh, as you can see in PGH, uh, we had all the equipment uh, that we helped them with, uh, fire trucks, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 tanks uh, to get into a smoking building and uh, be able to work, and then removing the smoke and the stench yesterday. Uh, I don't want to prejudice uh, uh, what is happening. Let me just point out, and thank you again, uh, Ambassador Vida Porta. Supposing a typhoon hits us, are we going to stop vaccinating? We'll have to figure that one out. Supposing an earthquake of the size that happened previously uh, in previous years hit us, uh, that we have to prepare for contingencies insofar as that is concerned. And I don't want to lose my effectiveness. So, well, you know what the biggest insult I get is, wait, atakbo ka lang eh. Bakit? Ano ba masamang tumakbo? If you're qualified, I agree with you. You should run. But there are bigger things than me, such as uh, our ability to make the Red Cross, uh, especially during this current time. So of course, as president, if I run and if I win, I can do a lot, lot more. I can do another subic in terms of uh, creating jobs, you know, from a disaster of Pinatubo, where everything was wiped out and uh, all the jobs were lost. And uh, I can do another uh, tourism drive, making it the engine of growth. I mean, it's all there in my record. I think. Uh, uh, my record speaks for itself. I'm not a one issue guy. I'm a multifaceted guy. Sounds like I'm running. Yeah. If it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. Not for this dick. All right. Uh, I'm a dick, not a duck. Dick Gordon. I'm not a, I'm not a tater, but I'm also, uh, uh, I, I, my name is Dick, but I'm not a tater, as I've all said in the past. So give it time. Uh, allow me to uh, consult my people. Uh, uh, some people are even asking me, please go back to Olongo, boy. It's going down the tubes. Uh, and uh, my wife, uh, I have to think of my wife also and my family. Uh, and I have to talk to uh, people. You know, Madalito uh, Makbo. The, the nice thing I'd like to do is get uh, uh, people to support. I don't want to be uh, snake bit by asking money from uh, people uh, who may ask later on, ask me uh, in return what we call regulatorily captured. So there's a lot of things in here. Uh, I don't want to disturb what I'm doing. I'm very happy in the Red Cross. I'm very happy in the Senate. I think I, 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 I go try and make a difference wherever I go. And uh, am I running? Maybe. Nothing's, nothing's out yet. First thing I'll ask is my wife before I run because she, she will be agitated for sure. And definitely uh, we have to look at uh, the field. If the field is not there, then it is the duty of every citizen who I think is qualified to make a stab at it, but not wildly. I ran earlier on. I ran because I didn't like the field. I ran knowing that I had no money. I ran, I just wanted to make sure that I can go around the country and provide the alternative. You remember, I told uh, our uh, opponents at the time in the debate, I said, Mr. Aquino, you have to earn the presidency. You cannot inherit it. You have to earn it. I said the same thing to other candidates. You cannot act your way. You cannot uh, uh, buy your way to the presidency. And that is where I come in now. This is my a statement that I like to make. You have to really, you and media can frame it. You know, ang ayoko sa media pag nag-survey, kala nyo, panalo na eh. You pick the winner already. Nag-survey. That's only a, a moment in time. Time and place. And if it's uh, being paid for, who is paying for it? Because, uh, for all you know, you're being mind managed. I mean, it, even the, the Russians have gotten into America's computers, and you have that encyclopedia. Uh, 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 Britannica, uh, Cambridge Analytica, you see? Uh, Cambridge Analytica that uh, has managed to do what is happening in our country. Uh, now you have trolls. I mean, I think we should. Uh, uh, demand from these trolls, pagka sumagot ka dyan, eh, ang, ang mga kaibigan lang na, dalawa. At ang mga pangalan nila, yung mga ibang klase, out of this world. 
but you know it's important that we focus like i said focus on what the country really needs from a leader can he uh with his record do what he claims to do he may be the brightest we have a bright president all of them were top notches and lawyers at then except for duterte and me siguro uh if i run uh president garcia was a top notcher president rojas was a top notcher in the bar uh president macapagal had 100% in civil law president marcos Oh my gosh, he, he was a top notcher. Uh, but what happened? What happened? You have to have change, commitment, and continuity in your leader. And you have to create a party that will uh, continue. Uh, that's why I had Bayani Fernando, in case maka disgrace kami. Bayani Fernando would have the political will like I do to continue it. And it takes about 20 years of good leadership. That's why the party system is important. If you forget that, we're lost again. And uh, there is no one man that can save this country. As I've known, I could not save Olongapo. I have to make them part. Every vendor, every driver, every person in Olongapo helped me in cleaning up Olongapo, helped me in volunteering, even in tourism for that matter, here in the Red Cross. Volunteerism, I say, vision, values, volunteerism equals victory. And it's the people that will make it happen. Thank you very much. All right. I think the most important thing that you said there was to ask the wife first. <laughs> I see that we're in good company with you. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. It's almost lunchtime. Thank you so much for joining us for almost two hours, Senator Richard Gordon. Thank you so much for being candid, always. Thank you for laying out your ideas and your programs and uh, also your insights. So, Thank you very much. And of course, thank you so much to all the uh, participants in this Zoom news forum. And also thank you to everyone who joined us via Facebook Live, although that came a little late. All right. So thank you very much. I uh, just want to thank you, Barnes and Jam uh, and all the other, uh, uh, all the other people that uh, participated, all the people who asked questions. And certainly, I hope people listening out there will remember that you cannot change unless you change yourself first. Uh, and I, I'll end by saying what, what I said on the first time I became mayor of Longapo. What this country needs is not just a change of men, but a change in men. You know, you cannot just come out of the woodwork and say, oh, I'm the brightest, oh, I'm the greatest, <laughs> you know, and say, I'm going to take over this country. Because you have, as you have done to me, I'm not a candidate yet, but you scrutinize me with your questions, you knew whether I thought out my answers. You knew that somebody could be up to the job. If when you ask him that question, you will know. And I think that's very important. That's why a democracy has got to be intelligent. And the intelligence comes from the free press, from a media that is free. Thank you, and God bless you all. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Okay. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you again, Senator, Senator Richard Gordon. Thank you. Okay. So.